No, I think I was going to touch on a couple of things that she mentioned, like benefits of family is what I wrote down. I don't know if you've seen that documentary series on Netflix yet about the blue zones around the world. No. It's great. I'll link it to you. Basically, it's talking about people who live over 100 and observing the community they live in, the lifestyle. What is it about the way they live that allows them to live a long time? Mm. And part of it is kind of having a European style, but also it's a very strong sense of community and everything from what I understood, had a sense of purpose. Because people now talk about a work-life balance, but I don't think they know what that means. So the way this guy went about his day was great. He got up at five, did all of his work, finished at 11, took a nap, had lunch, went to go hang out with some friends. Then he went to spend time with his family and just hung out, drank, chilled, had dinner, went to bed early, and that was the day. But it was a nice balance of everything, right? You did your work, which served a purpose, you spent time with family and friends, did both in the same day. So that was great to see how he wasn't stressed. He wasn't doing too much. And dude, you just saw this guy. My jaw dropped when I saw it. Horse came and dude just hopped on the back of the horse and rode off. I'm like, dude, this guy's a hundred. Hmm. And yet just like nothing, like he was still in his twenties. The way he moved, he was healthy and he was in a good mindset. Mm -hmm. They had another story where it was a lady, if I remember the, how the way the story went. Basically, she kind of didn't have, well, she didn't have a family of her own. And she fell into a huge depression because she kind of lost everything. But her family and friends always rotated in every single day. Someone different came in to check in with her, to spend time with her. She got to spend time with her nieces and nephews. And you saw that she got to live to be over 100. Even though she was technically alone, she had a strong sense of community and everyone was around her. And mm -hmm. that's what made her feel like she lived a fulfilling, happy life is the fact that there was a strong sense of family and community. And they went further in the documentary to show in a modern day society, how do you do that? You could do that in the countryside, in a small village, but how do you have a strong sense of family and community in a big city? And they showed that's basically what Singapore was trying to do and showed how there was government and tax incentives to get families to live together. So they would have retirement apartment complexes and setups to where, hey, if you move in this unit, if your mom moves in next door, she gets a reduced rate on her rent. And if your cousin moves in the, in the door next to that, mm -hmm. pretty much when I went through and talked about how over in Singapore, it's actually to be able to own your own vehicle and basically get it registered. That fee basically pay a hundred thousand to be able to drive your own car in Singapore. Holy cow. Is it a hundred thousand for the conversion rate or the equivalent of a hundred thousand an American? Yeah, I think it's basically the equivalent of American. That's basically what they're paying. Wow. Um, because they they really want people in those neighborhoods to walk around, to use bicycles, to use public transportation. They really don't want a bunch of people driving around their own car. And that's why when they showed footage of this guy chauffeuring and just driving people around his vehicle, yeah, it was super empty highway. Wow. They use the yuan, right? Or is it a yen? Uh, I'm not sure what their currency is, to be honest. That's, that's incredible. That was the whole point when they built Singapore is to see how do we take that lifestyle and those lessons we can take from blue zones around the world and apply that to a major city. It's a really good documentary into like blue zones around the world or something. Yeah, check it out. It's on Netflix. Really dope because right now there's like widespread depression, anxiety, and you know, they're trying to understand why does that exist? Because if you look at these blue zone areas, no one's depressed, no one's suffering from mental illness, and everyone's living to be almost 100. And that's in Singapore's a blue zone? Yeah, Singapore's a blue zone. I think there's like six episodes. And I think every episode touches on a different blue zone. Yeah, and some of them episodes have like two places. But we are losing one, fortunately. Osaka, Japan, we're losing. Oh. Because they started building quickie marts. You start introducing, you know, cookies and sweets. And then the kids are getting hooked on it. So unfortunately, I think they're seeing right now, BC is growing, but like... The rate of like 200% over there. Wow. You know, we give our greatest contribution from America, you know, McDonald's and everything goes to hell. <laughs>